for joining us on this video and today we are talking about naming your theater company. So for your pitches, we're going to ask you to give us a name for the theater company or the project or the ensemble that you're developing. Today we're going to share with you a little bit of information and then we're going to invite in our guest, Maya Dralis. So Roman, start us off. Naming a yes. theater company. Yeah, so a name. I mean, it is the audience and your community's entry point into who you are, what you are, what you do, uh, what type of programming you do. And it's super important. And it ties hand in hand with the structure or it can tie hand in hand with the structure of your organization. And when I think about different types of leadership, there are so many different types that you can, that you can implement into your organization. There are you know, grassroots theater companies. These grassroots organizations tend to take on the role of kind of like a collective. They're, uh, you know, every voice matters. Um, it's, it's, an, it's an ensemble type of uh, a leadership. Um, and then there are some models that, that are like clubs where they don't have necessarily a status, a, a legal status or a state or federal status, but they are a, a group of people who do thing, who, who do programming or do initiatives because uh, kind of like a, like a hobby. They're not necessarily trying to make money. That could be an option, but that's not their goal. They're doing it, you know, for the for the mission or for the uh, entertainment of it. We we have so many community theaters uh, that we know of, which are doing powerful work, lots of work, which are so important to that community. Um, you know, they call them community theaters because they are they are uh, generally have a nonprofit status, meaning they are providing a public service for their community. And community theaters, like I said, they have they typically uh, are nonprofits have a, a tax exempt status, and uh, we'll go into a little bit of that in a little bit. But a, a community theater can operate um, in a variety of different models as well. You could have your artistic director and your managing or executive director who have equal power. Typically, the, the, those two positions are in one, where it's like a, a managing artistic director or a producing executive director. So that one person is doing a lot of the development and the fundraising, but also you know, planning the seasons and, and planning out the programming and initiatives and hiring people. Um, and if they have the two positions, it's just you know, lightens the workload and, and provides a, a, a room for lots of great collaboration. Um, and the larger your community theater is, the more types of positions you get to have. And it's up to you to decide, you know, which voices are at the table for, you know, artistic decisions, which voices are at the table for administrative fundraising decisions and how those uh, link together. And, and then we have uh, regional theaters. Regional theaters are larger organizations that are recognized and, and typically have a very long history um, with their geographic community but are known regionally or um, regionally meaning statewide or recognized nationally. And these regional organizations tend to have larger budgets. They, um, so they, they can afford to have, you know, make, make up their leadership of those two positions or have more, have associate artistic directors or have uh, producing interns that, and then start to grow their staff downwards or straightwards. And then, the, and then there is something, you are a part of the Aspire LORT initiative. The LORT is the League of Regional Theaters, which is a nationally observed cohort of organizations that have um, adopted a model for contracting and a model for hiring artists into their organization to do initiatives or to do shows and productions. And LORT theaters generally are, you know, the, whatever their leadership looks like, they are trying to make money to be able to continue their work and continue their education or continue their initiatives. Regional theaters are also nonprofit theaters. Very rarely will you find a, a LORT um, uh, for-profit commercial theater, yeah. That, but that brings us to commercial theaters. Commercial theaters are on the flip side of the quarter. Commercial theaters, you can think of like Broadway or you know those huge, huge theater houses where they are not a nonprofit, so they, they are not accepting you know, donations from the public that can be um, tax exempt, but their goal also is to make money with their programming. And, um, and typically the, their structures look, are, are blown up, that they are um, times 10. They have you know, a dozen producers working on just one show, and then they'll have an owner of the theater, the producing staff, 
and all the people that, that fall under them. And typically that structure is always a hierarchical structure. But that's not to say that in any of those theaters that we mentioned, you know, grassroots, club, community, regional, lord, or commercial theaters, that you can't adopt a different type of model, like an ensemble where everyone's voice is equal or everyone has a say in decision making, hierarchical, or even pods. Pods being, you know, you have an artistic pod, a development pod, an administrative pod, and they're all you're all in the your your decision making um, pods. And then representatives of the pods, kind of like a Venn diagram, meet to talk about the larger decisions that were made in their pod, just for it's a different type of communication and different type of operation. And it's important to figure out what works for your organization and, and your staff and your group of artists. To add a little bit to that, um, uh, the distinction between community, regional, and commercial. Um, is usually based on size and what type of artists and what type of contracts that you're um, working within. So community, you can consider like on the smaller end of the spectrum. Regional is a bit larger than community. So these are the ones that are usually hiring equity actors. Um, and then commercial are very much focused on equity. So they tend to um, be a little bit more expensive, but they're also more profit um generating and so it usually balances out and within regional lort is a subset of the regional theaters so you have to be a regional theater and then agree to be a part of lort so that's sort of the distinction there uh, we want to additionally bring to your attention nonprofit versus profit llc versus sole proprietorship these are different distinguishings um, to describe different theaters that you may have heard or encountered in the past or be just be generally curious about. I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into it, but again, this is a lot more detail than we're going to be asking for in your um, proposals, but we always think that it's better to arm you with information so that you know as much as you can going into it. Uh, so nonprofit is an organization could be a theater, but could actually be kind of anything. Nonprofit is an organization dedicated to doing some kind of public good, some kind of service to their community. In the arts, we believe that our service is through our artistic presentations and our community engagement. A for-profit is a company or an organization dedicated to earning and uh, seeing a return on their investments. So earning a profit. Nonprofit doesn't mean you cannot make money. It shouldn't mean you cannot make money. If you're a nonprofit and you're not making money, you will not exist next year. Everybody's kind of focused on profit, but the for-profit theater companies are these commercial theater companies, which are less invested in community engagement uh, programming. Additionally, the difference between LLC and sole proprietorship this is a very specific question, and that's sort of the, the agreement that your company or your organization is founded under, what type of structure. And that comes down to the taxes, really, like how, which kind of tax structure do you want to um, agree to and which kind of liability structure do you want to agree to. LLC puts it um, all the liability into a limited liability corporation. It puts all the liability into this like fictional thing, a corporation, and then in sole proprietorship, all the liability is on the person, the individual. So if I were to be the sole proprietor, I would have all the like the decision making, but I'd also have all the liability. If somebody comes to my theater and breaks their leg, ooh, it's me and my financial um, bank accounts that are liable would have to take care of it. In the LLC, it's the company that would have to take care of it. Okay, we also wanna to talk to you about naming. So when you're thinking of your name, you've got all this information now about the different types of theater that you might wanna develop, the different structures that you're looking at, getting a sense of like, what kind of size of my organization do I want it to be? Uh, what kind of artists do I wanna work with? Thinking about your name, you have a strong potential to connect your name of your theater company to the purpose or the mission or the goals of your theater company. It doesn't have to be that way. For example, the theater where I work at, San Diego Repertory Theater, um, is a little bit more of a generic name. It tells us the city and tells us it's a theater, um, but there are other theater companies that may connect their name to their mission a little more um, directly. Um, 
Mixed Blood Theater Company in Minneapolis is really dedicated to telling a diverse perspective, uh, creating diverse stories on their theater stages. And so their name, Mixed Blood, indicates that. It really is up to you what you want your name to be and how you connect your name to your mission statement. One's not better than the other. They're just two different approaches and spend some time thinking about what do I want my name to tell the rest of the world? Because your name is your signal to the world of who you are. Do you want your name to create a sense of uh, elevation? Do you want your name to create a sense of mission? Do you want your name to create a sense of welcome? There's so many different possibilities for your name. We really, really encourage you to investigate, spend some time Googling, look at different examples, and then also read their mission statements and see how they connect or see how they impact or reflect each other. Uh, you, there's a couple of general ideas that we can share with you. You can name your theater after, many people name their theaters after locations, San Diego Repertory Theater, uh, La Jolla Playhouse, um, Denver Center. Other people name their theaters after specific people or specific things. Um, oh, hey, I'm wearing a sweater for the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center. So that one is named after a specific person, a specific thing, the Old Globe Theater, named after Shakespeare's Globe Theater. Uh, that's an example of thematic naming. And then another possibility might be sponsors. If you want to um, name your theater company, if you've got some close connections with some other organizations, that's always a possibility. It's not as common anymore, but it has existed in the past and we wanted you to know about it. We hope that you find this information useful. And now we're going to transfer over and invite in our guest for today, May Astralis. Everybody, thank you again for staying with us. We'd like to welcome our guest, May Adralis, who is a theater director. Um, May, we've got a couple of questions that we'd love to hear your insights on to be able to share with our students. To start with, uh, what is the name of the theater company that you work at? Yes, I am the Associate Artistic Director and also Director of New Play Development at Milwaukee Repertory Theater. Very cool. And, and May, can you uh, tell us how that name came to be? Um, yes, uh, uh, Milwaukee actually comes from a Ojibwe word, uh, Milwaukee, um, which if you watched Wayne's World, they were actually dramaturgically correct. <laughs> <laughs> it does mean the good land. Um, uh, it sits upon uh, the Milwaukee River. And uh, originally it was a repertory company, a true repertory company with um, a company of actors that performed all of the shows. Um, today, uh, it is still based in the same building. Um, it uh, sits on Oneida lands and Ojibwe lands. And it uh, used to be the Oneida power station. And so the main stage of the theater is called the powerhouse because um, it, it, it was in this power station. And so, um, uh, it and it hosts three different theaters. And as director of new play development, uh, we are committed to doing new plays in each of those spaces. Very cool. Um, we would love to ask you sort of maybe a more fan fantasy or a more like imaginative question. If you could rename your theater, what would you, would you change the name and what would it become? If I could rename the theater, um, I would probably, I would love to call it the People's Theater of Milwaukee. Um, it does sit downtown. I'd love to, uh, as I'm dreaming big, would love to um, open up the, 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 um, the ground floor so that it, anyone can come in and that it can be a meeting place uh, as theaters were designed to be. Um, and uh, interestingly enough about Milwaukee Rep, it actually sits on a, um, it, within a building that uh, actually has a public thoroughfare, even if it's indoors, it has a public thoroughfare through. So I'd love to open up that thoroughfare um, for local businesses um, uh, to basically create um, a hub, 
of activity so that it really is lives up to its name of being a people's theater. So it's for everybody. Excellent. So in that way, you're linking the name to sort of the goals of the theater. Yes. Yes. Very cool. Thank you. I love that. I love that. Uh, it's structurally, what is the model of the organizational leadership at the moment at Milwaukee Rep? Like, is it an ensemble? Is there a hierarchy? And, and, and how does that, that operate? Yes, um, it follows a, a structure that's similar to uh, most regional theaters in that it has a board structure. Uh, the board, I think, currently is a, at about 45 members. Um, and there is a traditional shared partnership of executive leadership with uh, the executive director and the artistic director. Um, and there is a leadership staff of, of 11 uh, of, um, you know, the, the department heads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How at Milwaukee Rep are artistic decisions made? We have um, just recently reimagined uh, our mission statement. Mm -hmm. So uh, that we, in, in sum, that it, that the theater ignites positive change in the community of Milwaukee. Um, and we up, try to uphold uh, five values. Um, I hope I can remember them all right now, but one is to be a ref, uh, um, reflection of the uh, diversity within Milwaukee and representative of, uh, and reflect uh, the people of Milwaukee. Um, excellence, artistic excellence. In sum, it is uh, to, to make decisions. We, we essentially go back to um, those core values um, and then attempt to, you know, that's how we make all of the decisions. And certainly it gets very thorny. One of them is innovation. Um, and uh, one is about uh, sustainability, sustainability. That. So um, we uh, basically will base decisions based on those core values. In our strategic plan, we outlined three main priorities. One is um, a capital campaign for the building, um, just because uh, it's been about 25 years since it's had a major renovation. And then two is a, a focus on new play development and encouraging new voices. Um, and three is for equity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, and so the theater is aiming to grow in each of those three areas. Very cool. So that's something that our students can definitely benefit from knowing that leadership um, that is focused on goals or connected to the overall mission of the theater company can help to support those goals and drive them forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, May. We are so grateful for your time and your voice and your uh, experience and wisdom that you share with us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure.